Well, hello, every hello everyone. The scene for the second of our devotions is the upper room, where so much of importance takes place. Arrangements have been made to share the Passover meal together, and Jesus has prepared the disciples for his imminent betrayal. We're going to pick up the story in Matthew chapter 26 and from verse 26. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. And I think the Old Testament provides a very important background to this story and three different elements of the Old Testament. First of all, of course, there is the story of the Passover. This is the Passover feast which they are celebrating. It was the most important of the Jewish festivals. It celebrated their release from slavery in Egypt. And at the very centre of the story, you'll remember, is the sacrifice of a lamb. And the blood of the lamb is placed on the doors, doorposts and lintels, so that when the angel passes over with judgment, those houses which have the blood on the doors, the angel of judgment passes over. That's where the name comes from. Secondly, there is the whole idea of covenant. Jesus talks about covenant. And of course, in the Old Testament, there are many covenants with Abraham, with Noah, and of course, with Moses. And at the centre of the making of the covenant, there was sacrifice. A sacrifice would be made to seal the covenant. But the prophet Jeremiah looks forward to a time when a new covenant will be instituted. It won't be a covenant of law, but a covenant of grace. It won't be written on tablets of stone, but it will be written on men's hearts. And then the third little element that's important here is the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, that, that day that happened each year when the high priest would take the blood of sacrifice into the temple and into the most holy place and he would sprinkle the sacrificial blood on the altar and he would go out and sprinkle the blood on the people to signify that that great problem of sin and forgiveness had been uh, dealt with through the sacrificial blood. Now you'll quickly see that sacrifice is at the heart of all three of those stories. Put that together with the fact that when Jesus starts his ministry, do you remember what John the Baptist says? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Do you remember what Paul says to the church in Corinth? Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. And so we come to this meal and Jesus takes the traditional elements or some of the elements of the Passover meal and invests them with a new significance. Takes the bread and breaks it and said, this is my body, which is broken. For you. And that would have been deeply shocking to the disciples who were listening. And what Jesus says is that a new and even greater deliverance than that of the Exodus story is going to happen. Jesus is going to bring deliverance from sin and death, not just to one nation, but to anyone who trusts in him. You perhaps remember that at his transfiguration, Jesus talks with Moses and Elijah. And what he literally says is he speaks of the exodus the, that he will accomplish in Jerusalem. 
And then Jesus takes the wine and says, this is the blood of the new covenant. And we learn three things about this cup. First of all, that it, it represents his blood shed for us. Secondly, that at the heart of that is the forgiveness of sin. And finally, that it institutes the new covenant that Jeremiah had visualised. You know, when, Jesus, when Jeremiah speaks of the covenant, he doesn't mention sacrificial blood. Jesus makes up that deficiency. Jesus says, it's my sacrificial blood, which will make that new covenant possible, a new way of access to God. And then Jesus says, I won't drink this wine again until I come into my kingdom. What's he talking about there? Well, one possibility is his resurrection. And you'll remember that after the resurrection, there are meals that he shares with his disciples. For example, on the beach by the Sea of Galilee. But more likely, it's looking forward to what is described in the book of Revelation as the wedding supper of the Lamb. That wonderful occasion when the full coming of Jesus' kingdom will be celebrated. And in the book of Revelation, it says, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And of course, it's this last supper that forms the basis of our service of communion, which we celebrate regularly, which we will celebrate together on Easter Sunday. And here's something important for us, that when the Jews celebrated the Passover, it wasn't just remembering what happened. It was as if they participated in the events. And when we share bread and wine, we participate in the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, John, the Gospel of John, doesn't describe the Last Supper. But after the feeding of the 5,000, you remember that Jesus talks to the crowds. And one of the things he says is this, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you shall not have life within you. This is an occasion for us to participate in the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And just to earth it in what's happening at the moment today, we want especially to remember those who have lost their lives, particularly those who have done so through serving others, the doctors, the nurses, the care workers who have died as a result of treating those with the coronavirus. And also the challenge for us this week to act sacrificially on behalf of others. May God bless you.